Hi, my name is Jennifer Rayner, and I want to welcome and thank you for checking out our Learning Health System site. I'll be talking about our journey towards a learning health system, which we have fondly named EPIC, Equity, Performance, Improvement and Change. We truly feel we have created something EPIC and hope that as we move throughout this journey, that there is much more to come. So I'd like to start out with this slide to remind us why we are doing this work. Basically, through all of our learning health system activities, we will be better because we learn from today. And through these learnings, we consistently implement what we learn. But I've added another bullet, one that sometimes at least I take for granted as implicit, but I think it is really important to add so that people understand why we are doing this work. The Alliance members have spent years collecting data, both sociodemographic and race-based data, as well as individual health data, social data, and other sorts of information describing the health care people receive. I don't want to sound too dramatic, but we have a moral imperative to use this data. First, we are spending a lot of time and money collecting it. If we do not use it, there is very little reason to collect this information. But more importantly, this data can provide a window into what is working and with whom it is working, which allows for tailored and improved service delivery, which ultimately will eliminate or reduce health disparities. Our learning health system is driven by our model of health and well-being and an equity approach. This is and will be explicit in the work that we undertake and the outcomes we are trying to shift. Our goal with the learning health system is to champion an, an equitable, inclusive, and respectful primary health care system. We will challenge the status quo with integrity and transparency and will be a catalyst for system innovation. We will embrace community-driven cooperation, participatory research, and will partner to influence ownership of the process, results, and change. We will act from and learn from an anti-oppressive, equity-informed, community-informed, and evidence-informed approach. To guide this work, we've established a set of principles. And these principles really just create a compass for doing the work of the learning health system. So when making decisions about projects or choosing between alternatives, the learning health system will refer to these principles to guide their actions. So all of our work will attempt to be anti-oppressive and culturally safe, and will work against the multi-dimensions of racism. The learning health system will engage diverse communities, clients, and providers, and use a participatory approach where possible. The learning health system will ensure the model for health and well-being and the equity charter inform and provide direction for which projects and activities will become priorities. We will ensure that an equity lens is applied to analysis and reporting to ensure health inequities are clearly identified. This information will be shared and applied to ultimately reduce disparities. Our goal is to ensure this work is meaningful, pragmatic, and actionable, again, to improve the physical and or social well-being of the people we serve. We have adapted a model for improvement that was originally developed by Dr. Charles Friedman. Our model reflects five aspects of work that continually work together to inform, build knowledge, and improve. Our model includes the role of assembling relevant data, one that Alliance members have done really well. We also have a strong foundation of analysis. But what we want to do with our learning health system is ensure that we actually close the loop on learning and improvement and use this data in a way that informs care. This is done through the provision of tailored feedback and pragmatic and participatory research. But it's important not to stop there. We need to use quality improvement methods and coaching as well as ongoing learning and sharing to ensure that this data and information improves and informs our practice. Our goal is not to just move to collect data our, do our goal is to move the dial on health outcomes and improve service delivery, and we will not accomplish this without deliberate action. So you might be thinking at this point, well, that sounds all fine and good, but what does this really mean? We've operationalized these think this thinking into a work plan that includes all sorts of activities that will move our learning health system forward. But in particular, I'm going to talk about a few specific projects. First off are our communities of practice. We have three planned, and the goals of these communities of practice are really to build a collective impact on shared goals. 
Providers and staff will get together and share best practices and we will provide a supportive environment for folks to provide support and mentorship to each other, as well as shared learnings. These will tend to be less data heavy. Our topics for this year include safe supply, social prescribing, and adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs. We also have three learning collaboratives planned. These will be facilitated by a QI coach and support will be provided by the RDSSs and our Alliance team, as well as you as DMCs and providers and staff from all of the Alliance organizations. We'll be using quality improvement methods and a much more structured and learning phases compared to the communities of practice. Specifically, we're working with something called PI, Practice Improvement Essentials, which was developed by the Canadian College of Family Physicians. This is used across Canada with comprehensive primary health care teams, so we're excited to bring it into the Alliance learning curriculum. The added bonus of working with PI is that we can offer main pro credits as well as other college credits. We are planning three learning collaboratives each year and we'll ensure that shared learnings between Alliance members and all of the QI methods and coaching are um, really available to achieve measurable goals and iterative improvements. So our three topics for this year include cancer screening, the collection of sociodemographic and race-based data, and panel size and appointment efficiencies. In addition to the communities of practice and learning collaboratives, we have a series of research projects. And we, as we mentioned before, we always aim these to be pragmatic and meaningful to you as providers and leaders. And if you're interested in learning more, we invite you to have a look at our website or check out our Epic News. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about our first learning collaborative because we're calling out for teams to join right now. This learning collaborative is focused on catching up on the backlog of cancer screenings caused by COVID-19. We are hearing now that there are hundreds of thousands of people who have not been screened. So just to provide a little context, some recently re released data suggests that there were, that mammograms were down by 97%, pap smears were down by 88%, and colon cancer screening is down by 73%. We know that when you apply an equity lens to this data, that there'd be some populations that were even more at risk. This is where our learning collaborative hopes to start. We want to kick off our first learning collaborative with the goal of reducing our backlog of cancer screening by bringing together 20 to 25 teams and applying QI methods, providing data and iterative improvements to ensure people who miss their cancer screenings are fully screened. As I said, We'll be applying equity data to all of this data um, and information, and we'll include stratifications to ensure that certain groups of people are not being missed. This will include racialized populations, people living in poverty, or 2S LGBTQ+. Each provider and staff team will be supported to determine what the root causes are for people not coming in for these screenings and small tests of change will be implemented and continually monitored. We expect innovation and tailored care will be put into place to make sure that all communities are screened and we intend to continually share these learnings and best practices with others so that we can continue to learn and improve our own service delivery. So if you're interested, please get in touch with us. We're expecting fairly high demand, so let us know if you're interested soon. I'm going to shift direction a bit to the role of learning health systems and integrated care, with, especially within Ontario health teams, or more broadly within any sort of integrated care system. We know the future of integrated care and OHT specifically are relying on a strong primary care foundation, and we want to support that strong foundation by enabling learning and improvement and ensuring engaged providers, clients, and communities. The learning health system is a key piece in this journey. So to enable this, we have joined forces with six other academic practice-based learning networks in Ontario as the only provincial learning network, EPIC. Our goal is to ensure that primary care research, quality improvement and learning are enabled to encourage continuous improvement and innovation throughout the province. We are calling this Poplar. The Poplar network will help support primary care generally by using EMR data, but is really being seen as a hub to inform OHT learning and innovation. 
We know that integrated care success will rely on primary care and primary care data, and we are counting on Poplar to help support us with this. So hopefully we've enticed you to take the plunge or at least piqued your interest for our learning health system to get in touch and learn more. We invite you to contact us. We can talk about anything I spoke about. You can get involved in a learning collaborative or a community of practice, or just share an innovative practice that you and your teams have created. This journey is nothing without engagement, so let's all jump in. I'm going to sign off with a quote from Clay Shirky that I think is quite relevant for EPIC and our transformational journey towards learning, improvement, and continued innovation. A revolution doesn't happen when society adopts new tools. It happens when society adopts new behaviors. This will be an important reminder that we have what we need to get this done. We need to start embracing new behaviors. Thank you so much for taking the time to familiarize yourself with our learning health system work. I'm going to leave you with some contact details and hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much.